Puka not only has one of the best names in college football, but he could also become one of the best backs in the country and also Kansas football history. So yeah, today we will be talking about the rise and journey of Kansas running back Puka Williams and how he became a star. If you're clicking on this video, then I know you're a football fan, so why not take a quick moment to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 6,000 subscribers by the end of August. We've seen a lot of growth in the last month on this channel, and I'm setting a really ambitious goal for this upcoming one. Be sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload, and now let's get started with the rise of Puka Williams Jr. I find myself rooting for Kansas football, and I really want to see Les Miles build the program. At the forefront of the resurgence has been Puka Williams Jr., who has a legit chance of being the best Kansas back ever, and an NFL back in the next few years. Well, Anthony Puka Williams was born in SEC territory, more specifically in Louisiana, and he was born and raised with a love for the game of football. His grandmother gave him the nickname Puka as a young boy, and it stuck with him for good. There isn't a whole lot out there about his childhood, but he eventually got to Hanville High School and began to dominate. He went on to put on video game-like numbers during his time there, and he was becoming known around the football world for more than just his nickname. He was considered one of the better running backs in the country, and he was the best back in the state since Leonard Fournette. Puka had a huge senior campaign in which he rushed for 3,128 yards and 37 touchdowns, but he had an even better playoff run. On the biggest stage, he rushed for 1,403 yards and 15 touchdowns in just five games en route to winning Louisiana's Mr. Football Award. He was the man at his high school and ran for so many yards that it totaled close to seven miles. He was considered one of the best running backs in the recruiting world, and he could do a little bit of everything. So why on earth did he choose to play for Kansas? Well, here's what everyone thinks. There are three reasons why he committed to Kansas. One, he wanted to go to a place where he could play from the start, be that guy, and also help build something special. Two, he said Kansas felt like home, and he was treated like family there. Finally, a ton of Louisiana players had been committing to Kansas in the past few years, and he would be the seventh guy on the roster, so he decided to help continue the pipeline. He chose the Jayhawks over the likes of Nebraska, Mississippi State, and LSU. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star recruit, the number nine all-purpose back, and the 272nd best player in the class of 2018. It's also worth noting that in a recent bracket with all the best running backs in Louisiana high school football history, Puka beat out Leonard Fournette and actually won. I thought that was crazy. Going into the 2018 season, the Kansas Jayhawks were the worst Power 5 program and were basically just a joke in every way, shape, or form, so Puka was going to be able to play from the very beginning. Besides current Washington Redskins wide receiver Steven Sims, the Jayhawks really had no talent on the entire roster. This showed as they lost their week 1 matchup against Nichols State in overtime, and that's just pathetic. Puka didn't play in their first game due to an undisclosed reason, but he helped them big in week 2. In his first career start, he went for 125 yards and 2 touchdowns, and ended a 47 road game losing streak. He then proceeded to run for a career-high 163 yards in their dominating win over Rutgers the following week. The Jayhawks were all of a sudden 2-1 and, and were just a few plays from being undefeated. Were things finally going to get better for them? Not quite. They lost their next four games and all of them were blowouts. He had a 72-yard run against Baylor and a 62-yard touchdown against Oklahoma State, but those are really the bright spots. They somehow won a game against TCU, but that would be their last win of the 2018 season. Puka ran for two touchdowns against Oklahoma, and another one in their close loss to Texas, but there just wasn't a whole lot of on-field team success during Williams' freshman year. As a freshman, he was named the Big 12 Newcomer of the Year, and became a first-team All-Big 12 selection after he ran for 1,125 yards and seven touchdowns with an average of seven yards per carry. Unfortunately, things quickly went south for Puka in his football career, and everything in his life was kind of in jeopardy. Williams was arrested on charge of battery after he allegedly sexually assaulted someone. This was a terrible thing for him to do, and this was a terrible look for him and the program. New head coach Les Miles immediately suspended him until everything was figured out. Yes, I said Les Miles, as David Beattie was finally fired. Going into 2019, Puka served his one-game suspension, and he was determined to make up for his mistakes. He talked to a lot of people and had conversations in the locker room about how he learned from the issue, and Les Miles was willing to give him a second chance. I have no idea what happened, but I hope Puka learns from his actions and becomes the best person he can be. Everyone knew the program was dead in the water, but I truly do think Les Miles can help resurrect the team and make them competitive in the coming years. Of course, they lost their week one game to Coastal Carolina, and I just shake my head at Kansas sometimes. In their second game, they went on the road to Boston College and beat them pretty badly. Puka went for 121 yards and a touchdown in their monumental win. After a close loss to West Virginia, they got blown out by TCU before a showdown with Oklahoma. 
This game actually made the primetime slot on ABC, and it was close in the first half. The Jayhawks would collapse in the second half though, and Puka's 137 yards were not enough to lead them to a win. The team was 1-4 right now, but they found themselves beating Texas with just a few seconds to go. The Longhorns would get in field goal range and eventually hit a game-winning field goal, but Kansas was competitive and gave them a scare. In that game, Puka ran for a career-high 190 yards and two touchdowns, and he was becoming a star. Besides a homecoming win against Texas Tech, the Jayhawks got blown out by four straight ranked opponents, and they finished the season at 3-9. Puka would be stellar as he was once again named to the All-Big 12 first team after he rushed for 1,042 yards and three touchdowns. You guys can fact check me or call me out, but I'm really not sure how Puka deserved All-Big 12 first team consideration with those numbers and the fact that there's a guy named Chuba Hubbard. But I don't make these kind of decisions. With his second 1,000 yard season, he became only the second player in program history to rush for back-to-back 1,000 -back yard seasons besides James Sims. He would also break the college football record for most rush yards in a player's first two years. That is an incredible stat, and to this day I don't even know if I believe it, as I was almost certain that record would have been held by Jonathan Taylor. Puka has also been a factor in the passing game as he caught 60 passes for 503 yards and 4 touchdowns so far in his Kansas career. He is truly a dynamic player, and he's a lot of fun to watch. Les Miles is slowly going to bring Kansas football back to relevancy, and I'm really excited to watch this happen. I hate when teams suck, and I want all teams to be competitive. Puka will 100% go down as the best running back in program history in my eyes, and I find myself rooting for him to succeed. With weapons such as Andrew Parchment and Stephon Robinson, Kansas has some serious playmakers at wide receiver, but who the heck will be throwing them the ball? That's a real question that Les Miles is going to have to answer, and I'm really curious to see who emerges. A lot of people project Puka to be a solid running back who will get a chance to play on Sundays, but his biggest question marks don't have anything to do with his play. First of all, he is 5'10", and some say he is too small and skinny to be a running back at the next level, and some say he could end up making the transition to wide receiver. Secondly, he does have some character issues with that battery charge, and some teams may not want that kind of risk on their team. Overall though, I will give Puka the benefit of the doubt, and give him a second chance to prove himself, because like everyone in life, we all deserve second chances to grow and learn from our mistakes. I know I'll be watching Puka Williams' fall, and I hope he can lead Kansas football to a bowl game. What do you guys think of Puka, and if you are a Kansas fan, what are your expectations for this upcoming season? Let me know your answers to that and who I should do next down in the comment section, and if you like the nickname Puka, want Kansas football to do well, or you just like this video and want my channel to grow, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to help me reach 6,000 subscribers by the end of August. It is a really ambitious goal, but I know we can hit it and I need your guys' help. If you are still here, check out my videos about my other 2020 college football stars, and until next time, peace.